YouTube and uh, welcome to my video about my DIY solar project. My name is uh, Thomas Kahn and uh, this is a project that I've been working for uh, on and off for well over a year. Uh, here I have the, the solar panels. They're currently connected in parallel. So each panel should, in theory, give us Maybe we can zoom on this little label here. Uh, 100 watts and uh, roughly uh, 5 amps uh, and uh, tw uh, 21.6 volts. Uh, I think it's more like 18 volts. Uh, the amps I'm not really sure about. Um, today it's a beautiful summer day, uh, 31 degrees Celsius outside. Uh, this is not normal weather for Sweden, so solar panels are uh, not that effective as it might be in a, in a country with more solar, uh, more sun. But um, anyway, that's cool. So I have four panels. This equals to uh, 400 watts. In reality, I think it's more like 360 or something like that. But uh, if you just come along here, I'll show you um, the cable that runs from the solar panels out to the solar box that I've built. So when I set out to build this box, um, I wanted it to be weatherproof uh, so I could leave it out in the rain. Uh, so I built it in a Stanley toolbox. It's quite large if you see here. Um, it has wheels and a handle. I'm sure you've seen similar boxes used in other projects but it really only has two outside connectors and uh, these two so this is where the the power from the solar panel comes in it's a new trick connector normally used for connecting um, loudspeakers but this is very handy um, I saw it in another video and got inspired by that. And it's also got a little weatherproof uh, lid that you can open and close. The other connector is a, an Anderson connector. It's used for charging uh, using a, a grid tied charger if I'd ever need to do that, which I will in the winter. So um, right now, it, it just charges on solar, but I think in, in winter I'll need to charge it through a wall socket. Let's move around and I'll open the box for you. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, some things are connected as we speak, but I built this uh, as a box in a box. So it's a wooden box that I placed inside this plastic box. And the reason for this is that I didn't want to drill holes in the plastic. As I said, I wanted the box to be weatherproof. Um, it's also much easier to uh, drill and screws and bolts in, in wood. So my brother, who's a carpenter, helped me build this. Uh, before we open the box up, I thought I'd show you some of the things that are on the panel. Uh, if we look up here at the far left, we have a voltmeter. Uh, it measures the, the voltage and the, the current and the energy um, on the DC side. So right now the charge controller is on and it's charging the batteries with uh, 14 volts. If I, if I turn the charge controller off, Using this switch, you'll see that it'll rapidly drop to the voltage that the batteries have. Uh, this little switch turns on and off, so I can choose if I want the, the meter on or off. If we move on to the right side, uh, there's a second meter here, but it's not only a meter, it's also uh, the on and off switch for the, the AC side of this build. Uh, you see I have two uh, AC plugs here. So if I turn this on, 
it'll turn on the inverter. Uh, I'll show you that later. And uh, it will also turn on the meter. So now these two sockets are live and I can get um, 230 volts from them. Then I have uh, four ports here. Two of them are uh, USB ports for charging USB devices. They're turned on using that switch. And now you see the blue LEDs turn on there. And then I have two standard uh, cigarette outlets. They're activated like that. So now uh, everything is on. And then the last switch here is what activates the solar. So it's, uh, I just thought it would be cool with, with yellow for, for the sun and then uh, blue here for the other stuff. There's also this little thing. Uh, it has, it's a 12 volt plug. I use it for charging batteries. So if you hang on, I'll just fetch. Battery charger. So you can attach that and uh, charge your batteries. So now we've opened the box up and uh, there are a lot of cables in here. Um, but I'm gonna try to give you a rough run through what all the different things are inside. Uh, what you first see is the sign inverter. It's um, an active SI102 inverter, uh, 12 vol volts, uh, 1000 watts. Um, it's not really supposed to be inside this box running when the lid is closed. Um, I don't use it that often, so, so far so good. Um, but if I hear the fan running or if there's something, I usually open up the box. As I told you earlier, uh, the inverter is activated using this switch. So I'll just switch it on and the beep you heard is the inverter beep. Now, um, running the, the voltage to an inverter like this through a switch like this would, would never work. It's just too small. So what I've done is I've used a relay. This is a 200 amp uh, relay that feeds the, the power from uh, the positive hub, which in turn is connected to the batteries, and it feeds it in through this to the inverter. So I use a relay to be able to use this button uh, to switch uh, this unit on and off. So here's the DC side of the, the um, inverter. And if we move on over here to the other side, and this is probably the, the part of the construction that I'm least proud of. Um, I have these clip connectors. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll fix them later. But anyway, you see the, the, there's a single plug here and it runs to a, a safety breaker. This is normally something you would use in a, in a home. Uh, and it's uh, for personal protection if somebody should do something or if there should be a, a short circuit somewhere. Also here we have the, the coil for the AC meter and the cables running up to this meter here. And if I switch, we see that it's here. Um, maybe later I'll show you uh, something running on it. Uh, we see a power consumption of one watt right now. This is probably this meter because it actually runs on, on AC. So that's the AC part and the inverter. As I told you earlier, this, uh, the Nutrik connector uh, comes in on the side here and uh, goes through a hole and into this box and it's also fed through a relay or rather two relays but um, the solar is just using one of them. These relays are smaller, they're uh, standard automotive relays uh, and I use them in, uh, I use two, re two relays 
together because I want to be able to turn off the charge controller uh, completely and to do that I need to one disconnect it from the battery and two disconnect it from the solar panel because the charge controller doesn't like to be um, connected to the solar panels only so, so it also it, it, it needs the connection connection to the batteries and as I told you earlier, this is a switch on the front, a single switch. And when I throw this switch, it lights up. Um, and these two relays are activated. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but the unit is, is powering up. Um, right now it's, the batteries are at 12.9. And pretty soon, I think it'll be calibrating itself, and now it starts to feed um, power from the solar panels. Um, uh, the charge controller also has a, a, an output for 12 volts directly. I don't use that. Everything I use is um, is through the batteries. Er, er, er. What more do I want to show you? Yes, maybe I can show you this. Uh, this is like the, the main switch. It runs between the batteries and everything inside this box. So if you switch this off, you basically switch everything off. Um, sometimes I use it just to be sure, but normally it's just on. And down here we can see underneath this I have two 25 amp batteries um, they're uh, gel batteries and they're connected in um, parallel so I get 2 times 25 which is 50 amp hours um, and the positive side comes up here and um, it runs through a, a large um, fuse uh, I think at the moment I'm using 80 or 100 amps, not really sure, somewhere around there. And this in turn connects to the hub. So there are two power hubs here, negative, positive. They're very useful for connecting all these uh, uh, wires that run everywhere in the box. At first I planned on not using them, but now I feel like uh, it was a pretty good idea. Um, crowded area in the box. I also have on the side here you can see the shunt for the, the meter, the DC meter. Um, I let the negative uh, part from the battery run through this shunt and I get a, a reading on the front. This. Yep. Um, let's see. Yes, and then to connect all this small fidgety stuff, all these small small cables, I have a, a, a bus bar uh, from um, Blue Sea Systems. Uh, it connects all the negative connectors, and then I have um, a fuse box with uh, automotive fuses. I don't know if you can see that, but this is where all the positive connections run. And I have fuses, uh, most of them are rather small. So, but, but basically every, every single part of this has its own fuse. Uh, well, not every, but the USB part runs on one fuse and, and uh, the cigarette outlets has its own fuse. These meters have their own fuses and so forth. So basically uh, I have a, a system that I can control uh, more or less entirely from the front here uh, using switches and uh, sometimes the switches are direct. These for example uh, control the current directly to these outlets. Sometimes they're uh, uh, I'm using relays here and here, for example, to to connect. But now I can turn off the charging, I can turn off the 
AC side. I can turn off this meter. I turn off the USB ports. I turn off the cigarette outlet. So now the box is basically dead, does nothing. And um, I can close it. Just disconnect the neutral connector, close this lid. And now it's, it's uh, portable. Uh, I would like to show you the batteries. Um, but unfortunately, they're hidden underneath the wooden box that I built, so um, I think they're, they're kind of square batteries. They're used in cleaning machines and, and similar um, devices. Uh, not really that exciting, but they're two 25 amp hour batteries that I use, basically. Thank you for watching my video on my solar DIY box. Um, if you're interested uh, or have any questions, write them in the comments below. And uh, if I get the time, I'll get back to you with some more info on the build. Thank you.